Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Michael's Matters. Now, of course, as per usual, I am Michael. Hi, hello. And now that we are most of the way through the month of June and about halfway through the year, I thought it'd be interesting to really look at the newest data out about inflation and examine the early predictions that are out there for next year's COLA and see if I can actually make my own half year prediction as well for the COLA for 2024, because it will have a big effect on those folks who are on benefits that are tied to inflation. So that could be things like Social Security Retirement, Social Security Disability, SSDI, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, as well as VA, Survivors, and Railroad Retirement Benefits, and really all the different iterations of Social Security and pensions that are tied to inflation. I want to try this because uh, looking at a lot of the estimations that are out there already floating around, I feel like they are mm, a bit optimistic, at, at least in comparison to what I'm seeing. So today I am going to do the equivalent of a predictive half court shot and make a half year cola prediction for 2024 and hopefully at least get lucky and hit the rim. Uh, and by the way, uh, not for nothing, the actual probability of hitting a half court shot according to ESPN is one out of 100. So, you know, that's a 1% possibility. So I think hopefully we could probably do a little better than that. But today we're gonna take a look at some of my predictions, some other folks' predictions and see how they stack up against the existing cola estimates that are already out there. Now, this is Michael's Matters, and before we get to it, if you like these videos, if you find them interesting, if you find them useful, or hey, maybe even if you find them helpful, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does help the channel to grow, and we are super thankful for that. But also, you get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. All right, now, let's get down to the video. So today, let's start off with where the professionals, quote unquote, the professionals, are estimating the COLA for 2024 to be. Because the reality is that folks on Social Security benefits really have a lot hanging on here, depending on uh, which way the inflation rates go over the next couple of months, because it could mean the difference of hundreds or even thousands of dollars in benefits that they may or may not receive next year. But also, these benefits compound uh, year over year, as the yearly COLA, or the cost of living adjustment, is based on the previous increase from the previous year. So the overall effect on seniors budgets can be pretty dramatic and long lasting. This is important now moreover than really ever uh, because a lot of seniors are still trying to catch up from the shortfall years since 2020 when their benefits had actually fallen short by an estimated $1,054 over the entire time page. So the smart money at the moment, and by the smart money, again, I'm referring to the Senior Citizens League, which is a nonpartisan advocate group who watches things like this. As of June, they are estimating that the COLA for 2024 could be at or possibly even below 2.7% increase. This is down from their previous estimates last month that had it at 3.1%. Now, obviously, as we get closer to the actual COLA sample months, the picture will get a lot clearer. But over the last month, as inflation rate has begun to drop uh, across the country, it means that the likelihood of a bigger COLA also, too, begins to drop with it. This is because the COLA that seniors and retirees and folks on Social Security get every year is based on the rate of inflation that the country sees. After all, the COLA is the cost of living adjustment, meant to help Social Security beneficiaries and people on pensions have a benefit that goes up enough to adjust the increased cost of basically everything, aka inflation. Of course, with inflation continuing to be on a downward slide, it's going to really mean a big, big difference between this year's COLA and last year, as last year was at a 40-year high at 8.7%, because really of a perfect storm of the Ukrainian wars and the Putin price hike and pandemic supply shortages and the timing of the COLA sample months, all these things conspired in favor of giving folks on social security programs a supersized benefit uh, for this last year. So let's take a look at the data and see what we can glean from this most recent CPI report for June that has numbers all the way through May. We can see that the overall inflation rate, as well as the CPI and W, the, that is the COLA inflation metric, has really dropped dramatically from the beginning of the year. It started out at 6.3% in January, but then dropped to 5.8% in February and continued to fall to 4.5% in March. Then it went up just a little tiny bit in April to 4.6% and then had another pretty decent drop in May that last month that we have uh, down to 3.6%. So June numbers we won't have until next month in July when the July CPI report comes out. But considering the sample months for the COLA are the months of Q3, so July, August, and September, uh, we are kind of already halfway through to that point. So we can get a good idea. 
Either way, looking at the numbers with the exception of the little blip in April, there is a very obvious downward trend, which would result in a lower cola. One saving grace about how the cola is calculated, though, is that no matter how low the inflation numbers are, the increase will never go below zero. In fact, a $0 cola year is pretty rare, and only a couple times in the last 20 years has it been at zero. If we look at the overall five-month average inflation rate, it comes out to 4.96%, which is sort of helpful, but since Social Security only looks at a three-month average, let's look at the three-month average, which comes out to 4.23%, which, if this was to be the COLA, would still be above the 10-year COLA average, which is only at 2.5%. Another important thing we can look at is the average decline. So if we look at the decline from January to May, we can see that the inflation went from 6.3% to 3.6%. So over a five-month period, on average, each month it dropped by 0.54%, or a totality of 2.7%. All right, so with all that set up, if we extrapolate those numbers uh, for the remaining of the months for the CPIW stats at the same average rate of decline, or, you know, thereabouts, it means that for June, we would get a rate of 3.06%. July would be 2.52%, August would be 1.98%, and September would be at 1.44%. Now, like we know, Social Security takes the three-month average for Q3 as the COLA increase. So if we average those numbers for, the hypothetical numbers that is, for July, August, and September, we end up with a 1.98% increase for the COLA, which would be my prediction for next year's COLA at this point. Of course, these predictions can change as the numbers change and as we get more of the real information already in. So what does this percentage actually look like when it comes out to numbers? Well, if we take the average Social Security benefit for 2023 as of April, which is the most recent month that we have, at $1,834.80 a month for retired workers, and multiply that by 1.98% estimated COLA from me, <laughs> it would mean that the COLA increase for 2024, based on my prediction, would be an increase of just $36.33 a month, or yearly $435.96 more. What that looks like monthly is it would bring the average Social Security benefit check to $1,871.13 a month, or yearly uh, $22,453.56. Now, so that is my prediction. Now, if we were to compare that to the estimates from the Senior Citizens League, who have it at 2.7% right now, uh, which would mean a $49.54 monthly increase, or a monthly benefit of $1,884.34. So there really is quite a few dollars in difference in those estimates. In fact, $13.21 a month. But remember, you know, whichever one it actually comes out to be, because even if it is just a few dollars, over the years and even over the decades down the road, because of the way the increases are based off, again, previous year's benefits, it could mean a huge effect on the overall amount of benefits that people on Social Security and retirement actually end up getting throughout the entirety of their retirement. So I think one thing is safe to say is that the COLA for 2024 is not going to be as big as it was this year at 8.7%. That was quite large. I mean, that, it's not even going to be in the ballpark. But these numbers uh, from me or from the Senior Citizens League, whichever one you take, they are still going to be just estimates. Uh, the economy, I mean, it is wily. And it zigs when it should zag, and it zags when it should zigs, and then it zigs again. <laughs> so it doesn't actually work in linear models. One thing that is really going to be a guarantor of much lower COLAs this year that we didn't really have in previous years recently is going to be the Federal Reserve Bank led by Chairman Jay Powell, who is putting a Herculean effort in to bring down the rate of inflation. He is primarily using, well, the only tool that he actually has, which is interest rates, so either raising them or lowering them, that has a really strong negative effect on inflation. The result is, basically, we have a pseudo-federal entity doing its darndest to bring down inflation, which will also directly correlate to bringing down a COLA increase as well. To me, though, this always ends up bringing the biggest question, which is, and I don't really have the answer to it, uh, which is, is it better to have a bigger COLA and higher inflation or a smaller COLA and lower inflation? That one, not quite sure, but I'd be curious to see what you will have to think about that. Now, lastly, it's important to mention that because of a perfect mixture of events last year, uh, with the result of an 8.7% COLA, which is quite, quite large, it has put a lot of seniors and retirees and folks on pensions tied to the CPIW in a much better financial position this year, as we see the inflation rate is only at 4.23%. 
4.96%. So it definitely gives them a lot more wiggle room this year, but I, I don't think that's going to happen again next year. All right, so that's it for today's Michael's Matters, where we try to make an educated guess at what the cola could be for 2024 uh, from the halfway point in this year. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you found it interesting, if you found it helpful, or maybe even if you found it useful, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does help the channel grow. And we are so thankful for that. But also because you get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So for Michael's Matters, I am Michael, hoping that you take care of yourselves, take care of others, and have a happy, healthy day.